Pythagoras' first question, Pythagoras, okay? Hopefully, you saw that straight away, and you recognize that we, although the form of Pythagoras is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, you also need to remember that if I'm after one of the smaller sides, which I am in this case, um, x, or in this case x, equals the square root of 12.5 squared minus 8.2 squared. Because I might just as easily remember this as a equals the square root of c squared minus b squared. I'm after one of the shorter sides. So, I don't know, I haven't worked it out. 9.4. So, Pythagoras, you need to be able to use it very quickly and accurately especially if you want to find one of the shorter sides, remember it's the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus the other side squared. Number two, find the area. Area is half base times height. So that's a formula that really you ought to know. And if you look at this, actually, if you think about this triangle, it's half of that rectangle. So that's where the formula comes from. Area is half base times height and it actually doesn't matter which side I call the base so it's just a half times 8.4 times 12.6 which comes to 82.92 did you say? 52.92 or 52.9 to three significant figures, possibly more appropriate, but, okay. So that's the answer. Know that formula for the area of a circle, half base times height, so you can just quickly put in the numbers and there's the answer. These little things form part of larger problems, so you, know, you need to be able to do these little bits quickly and be confident with them so you can then tackle more complex problems. Number three, now we're into today, really. Trigonometry is required for this one. So as soon as you see a right-angled triangle and there's an angle involved with it, which is the case here, then so katoa should pop into your mind. Sine, cosine, and tangents. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Um, there's a chapter on basic trigonometry in here to remind you of these little ratios and how to use them and, and use the calculator. So if this is something you're unsure of, you need to focus on that chapter and look at it. Okay. Um, in this case, this is the angle I know, 40 degrees. So the side opposite the angle is called the opposite side. So that's the opposite. The side next to the angle is called the adjacent. And the side opposite the right angle is always called a hypotenuse. So for this particular case, we want the opposite side, x, is the opposite. We know the hypotenuse and we know an angle. So we want the one that involves the hypotenuse, the opposite and the angle, which is this one. So that tells me that sine of the angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. So that's what this is supposed to be remem reminding me of. You familiar with this, Zoe? Yeah. So if sine is opposite over hypotenuse, what does this tell me? If the sine, if this is telling me that the sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse, what is this little bit telling me? Correct. And finally, Tim. Right, so those are the ratios that we remember. If I know the opposite and the adjacent, the tangent is the one that's involved, tangent of the angle. So hopefully you remembered that. And if you did, you recognise that actually I'm after the opposite, so I've got to rearrange this. So the opposite equals hypotenuse times the sine of the angle, bringing that hypotenuse up there. So now... I could just put the numbers in. X equals the opposite, the hypotenuse rather, which is 12.8 times 
the sine of 40 degrees, which is 8.22. Will you all just do that on your calculator, please, so we just check that? So we've got our answer, 8.22, and uh, just to remind us for the video, make sure that uh, your calculator is measured in degrees if you're going to get the correct answer here. So that's that one. And the last one I gave you was uh, this one. Again, it's the same ratios. So if you remember that sine, cosine and tangent ratio thing that we just wrote down, so Katoa, which one is involved this time? The tangent, because we know the opposite and the adjacent to the angle. So if this is the angle we're associating, you're, you're concerned with, then this is the opposite side and that's the adjacent side. So it's the tangent one. Tangent of the angle equals opposite over adjacent. We're well, after the angle. So this time, theta, the angle, or x in this case, now generally theta equals the inverse tan. And if you look at your button, that's the shift, the one above the tangent, the angle whose tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that's the formula I'm going to use. So I put in x equals inverse tan of, so I put, put, press the inverse tan button, I automatically get this far, and then I hit the fraction button, so I can put the opposite, which is 4.8, over 3.6. Close bracket. In fact, I don't even think we need to close the bracket. And then equals 53.1 degrees. And it's pretty well always appropriate to round to the nearest degree, 53 degrees. Use the inverse when you're actually after the angle, no. not the side. Yeah. What, uh, what this says actually is the inverse tan means the angle whose tangent is 4.8 over 3.6. Okay? 